podcast episode is proudly sponsored by H&M. We're thrilled to collaborate with H&M for the grand reopening of their Harlem store on 125th Street. Be sure not to miss the opportunity to visit the store and get your hands on exclusive Harlem's Fashion Row tote bags and unique item from Harlem School of the Arts. H&M is your ultimate holiday gift shopping destination. Okay, so this is a real moment for me because this is my first time sitting down one-on-one with Keisha McLeod. First of all, this woman here, she's a stylist, she's an image architect, she's a strategist. I mean, I see the strategy, Keisha. I'm not gonna go into everyone she's dressed because I want her to do that. But she is, I think, reframing and reshaping um, how American sports intersects with fashion. And it is incredible for me to see that. And it is such an honor for me to be thank sitting you. down with you today. So <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> thank, I you. Mean, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> so it was so hard because before we even started, like, turn on record, I could not stop myself <laughs> from asking all the questions. So I'm actually going to go back to, um, you were born in Queens, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Grew up in Queens. Yep. And I was asking you kind of, like, where did the creativity come from? Like, is, did, did you come from a creative family? I know that your family is um, is West Indian. Mm -hmm. And my, my husband's family is also mm -hmm. West Indian. They're so Canadian. The you know, medical field is right. exactly that's <laughs> right. it. You're not doing anything else. Like, right. That's it. That's the trajectory of what you're doing. I think what I was lucky enough to have parents that looked at me and let me do me and let me be creative, let me wear what I want. We went to a private school, but the days were dress down days. And I enjoy that. I had cool cousins that let me wear their iceberg, their Nietzsche. And mm -hmm. I was wearing that to school at like 12 and 13. So just my love for style and my creative outlook came at an early age, but that's because the people around me, my support system allowed me to be that. It wasn't, not necessarily not a strict household else I'd be like <laughs> right. right now, but it was, they just allowed me to be creative. I didn't have to go in one lane because this is what I had right. to do. It wasn't like, oh, you have to follow the, tra the tradition. So, you know, for first born generation, I'm here and, um, my aunt, what is the photographer name? She's on Jamel Shabazz's cover oh. of his book. So my aunt and my godmother, they went to South Shore High School and my mom came from there. So the eighties are that, and my mom was a DJ. So, and my dad was a DJ also what? like, yeah. So those kind of creative outlooks, they've always been that, I know, so crazy. That is so <laughs> dope. I mean, who can say that about their parents? Yeah, so it's like, I always had that, especially my mom in the huge Gucci earrings wow. and the fur coats. And this is what, this is what I grew up in. And so I was always that, I guess, creative child, not necessarily like a butter chi butterfly child, but like that creative output of a child. But what I love is that um, there's so much strategy behind mm -hmm. what you do. And before I even get into that, because I'm getting ahead of myself, people, I told y'all, I'm going to forget that because, this is a show it's because there's no so last night. You're like, wait, let me do I know. Over. I was like, I got to I got to <laughs> dig in. I got to dig in. OK. Um, OK. You know what? I'm going to back up okay. just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to have you run down the list. Just give me 10 because you've got 10? like, I know, you've I'm got like forget 50. people and I, I really. Some like, of the, okay, so let me give them some of the people. And you, you can, can do you it. Can, and you then can you can hop in, okay? Because I forget so, a lot. My, so I she dresses like PJ Tucker, mm -hmm, so James right. Harden. Used to, but yes. So, um, yeah. Serena Williams. Yep. Um, she just dressed Rich Paul for his Cold entire Cold. book tour. Yes. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Candace so Candace Parker, Parker from yeah. the WNBA. Matter of fact, you're dressing a lot of WNBA yep, players now. Yeah, and that's now, amazing. That's Aaliyah that Boston, uh, Deja Kelly, who is in college. So when she comes into the NBA, but WNBA, but even taking her to her first fashion week and letting her understand how it goes. Jordan Woods, Carl Anthony Towns, um, Austin Matthews, Matthew Kachuk, Soraya Tinker, female hockey player. Um, Serge Ibaka in the past, Andre Iguodala, who just recently retired, Chris Bosch, uh, taught me so much of like 
just gentlemen suiting and everything like that back in my hip hop days, because I do have a past in hip hop, uh, Jadakiss, Rick Ross, Neo took me all over the world. So I was able, the reason I got my passport was because of Neo. Um, And just tons of like Def Jam artists, Atlantic artists, Atlanta record artists. and you're working with the new NBA players. So yeah, they're so coming new, into the league, I saw that. That's really good. So mm-hmm. what I get to do is I get to work with agents in their companies and kind of like bulk the whole project and mm-hmm. get these designers to understand where I'm coming from and build like a bigger picture of it all and dress 10 of their athletes. Granted, they are going high in the draft, but that doesn't matter actually. Right. Um, <laughs> you get like a Trey Jones, um, I worked with him 2020 draft and had Valentino dressed him. And that was like new for him because he's like, wait, what? You know, a lot of these young boys know Gucci and the regular things, but to know like tailoring and suiting and these pictures last forever. And to fast forward full circle, I just did his wedding over the summer. Mm. Uh, Joel Embiid, who was MVP last year, is now like a longtime client of mine. So for me, I always make it a point to dress the best and the greatest because they teach me so much. Mm. I always think that I can't learn anymore because what is there to learn in styling? You're putting things together and how you go, you know, and things just go. But I learn every single day with every single client. Mm. I think recently with even with Rich Paul, just sitting there in awe and listening to his story. And all I'm doing is make sure he's good, you know, and I haven't done a whole press tour in a very long time. Usually it's my assistants like, here you go. And they go. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna rock out. I'm gonna treat this like a day one. Like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna sweat. I'm gonna be there from six to 10 PM, 6 AM to 10 PM and working and understanding that falling asleep in the car, waking up, but just absorbing still information and really learning, you know, almost, uh, I just, uh, reached my 18th NBA season of just like styling and working with athletes. So in the 17 years that I've been doing this, it's just, how can I still learn? And I'm still learning more, so. That's so crazy. Mm-hmm. I was looking at, um, forgot the article that it was in, but you were like personalizing the guy's jackets. Like in one of them, I think maybe he had lost his brother and you had put in photos. Yep, Benedict Matherin, Indiana Pacers. Um, that was draft 20. My memory is also gonna be really insane. That was draft 2022. Yep, 2022. And for him, it's, uh, you know, I had to work with Dolce and Gabbana to create all of these suits for all of these guys. But he's like, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I need something personal for me mm-hmm. and I need it to be with me. And, you know, to run that by a designer, they're like, no, you can't alter our designs. It's that, it's this. But it needed to be personal to him yeah. to where he saw it. And so I worked with um, this photographer and atelier and we were able to plaster it in a way that it still looked, it still was part of his story and it still was there. Um, one of my mentors, he always told me to be part of like that storytelling, you know, right. build stories, know the chapters, learned that from Chris Bosch a lot. I learned a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot from my clients. <laughs> so speaking of, um, and it's Serena Williams is not just a client, mm-hmm. a friend, mentor, sister, a friend, mentor. a sister, mm-hmm. like all the things for you. You dressed her for the Met Gala yeah. mm-hmm. this year. This year, uh, last year, the year when she was pregnant with Olympia. No, that's, that wasn't our first year. Our first year was Alexander McQueen's. Um, I don't know what year yeah, that is. That was, yeah, it was, was Alexander McQueen. Yeah, it was Alexander McQueen. Um, what was it, Crazy Beauty or something like that? That was our first okay. uh, Met Gala together, yep. And I've read that you talked about that you learned a lot from her. What are some of the lessons that you've learned from her, especially as a woman and an entrepreneur? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was reborn again when uh, working started working with her. Mm-hmm. When I really so it was always one off a stylist. Um, I used to work under. She couldn't work with her, so she sent me to work with. Just I was one of her assistants, so she was like, "Hey, you know, Serena needs X, Y, and Z. You can go do it because I'm doing all of this." So I end up going to work with Serena, and it was scary and intimidating. And it was I'm in. She's like, "Hey." are you the stylist that's working with me today? And I'm like, yeah. And she was like, I need to go to the mall. Can you take me to the mall? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, Wait, is there a driver? Is going to the mall? Yeah, she, she just goes to the mall. Wow. And so she's uh, so I take her to the mall. I'm like, you know, is there a driver? She was like, no, you can drive. I'm in like a RAV4 that I rented. <laughs> so I was like, uh, oh my God. 
Okay, so we're just going to the mall and she's uh -huh. just asking me questions. What was so crazy? We had a mutual friend, uh, tight end at the time, tight end of the 49ers, Vernon Davis, who was okay. also a good friend of hers. And her and I, I don't want to say we didn't hit it off, but right. it was just, this relationship was like this. It was wow. over there and over there. Wow. And I could feel like Vernon called me during, while I was in the class, I was like, oh my gosh, she's giving me such a hard time. And he was like, I'm gonna talk to her for you, don't worry. He calls her and she goes, you know, Vernon? I was like, yeah, that's like one of my first athlete wow. clients that I'm working with. And, you know, just even working with him, that's a whole other story. And she's like, oh, you're cool then. I'm okay. <laughs> like, okay, you hang out with Vernon? All right, you're fine. Right. And so he kind of gave that like green light, like, yeah. oh, she's cool. And just yeah. from there, just looking how she works, how she plays, uh, you know, just the woman she is, she's taught me so much. And for her to say to this day, like, oh my God, look at you, I'm so proud of you. And you're oh, so outspoken, wow. you know, things like that. And it's still her. Wow. Um, I even remember at, you know, the movie, I've been there, been around her, around her family all of the time. And I'm sitting there crying, watching the movie, you know, King, Ri King Richard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So emotional. And she's like, are you crying? And I'm like, <laughs> Yes. yes, especially the ending when a yes. Beyonce song comes on and you're watching oh all God. her accomplishments because this is somebody I grew up watching. This right. isn't someone that, oh, I just had, I grew up watching you. You are a part of history. And, right. and she's like, girl, just get it together. Like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I guess I'm oh get it gosh. together. Really quick, you know, and for someone like that to be a friend, a mentor, to watch how she moved, to watch how she's moving after you know retirement, to watch how she's moving as a mother, to watch how she's going into her stage two or stage three, because it's, it's work mother, and then this whole uh, Serena Ventures is like the most amazing thing that I get to absorb, that I know that my career path could be different because we see a lot of these athletes and they just stay one lane yeah. and that's it, you yeah. know? And I feel like uh, Chris Bosh, when it, he's an artist, so he's also told, told me, I can go this way, Andre Iguodala into investment, so mm. I, he could go that way, Serena and entrepreneurship and ventures and everything she's doing. I'm like, oh, I, it's an easy pathway, wow. just as long as you apply that strategy in right. it and set yourself up to get there. And then I, I learned from them and that's what I really love is learning from my clients. You know, I'm listening to you talk about kind of your relationships with your clients, and I'm thinking about you. There are times when we've tried to make things happen, and I won't say what, but you've been like, Brandis, here is the person. Did you reach out to them? Like, this is like, and I'm always like. Now you see the strategy of why I reach out to you. But, 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 <laughs> but, but, the, but you don't have to. I don't, yeah, I don't. You don't have, have to, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. and you do. Every, every, and I think every twice a year we yeah, reach out to you. Yep, yeah, twice a year I reach yeah. out to you. Twice a year I try to not necessarily uplift somebody else there, yeah. and it's not necessarily you. It's other designers and everything you work with. It's changing how they look. Um, I remember Andre Leon Talley introduced us to Laquan Smith mm. like way back when, and he was going to work with Serena for ESPY Awards. And this is way back when, and me, I didn't even know me and Laquan came from the same town in Queens. Wow. It was that far back, but it's giving people like a chance and really seeing that working with uh, Pierre Moss years prior, mm. he was doing leather jackets for me and my clients and that was it and giving wow. them sweatsuits, you know, and that was it, you know, so it's the strategy. If I have a platform to showcase and to show and prove, I'm going to be there and I want it too. Even the fact that you were at June 79 show mm -hmm. yep. with PJ. Uh -huh. Yep. And I was just <laughs> like, this is so dope. Yep. You know, like the fact that like you don't, you, you're getting invited to the big, big, <laughs> big shows in Paris and Milan. <laughs> And you're here at like, you know, Dumbo House uh, and sitting then, and at June 79 uh -huh. and bringing a client, mm -hmm. Yep. not even coming by yourself yep. and you're sitting at the show and I'm like, man, she, she, you're just, that to me spoke volumes <laughs> oh, just about who you are. Um, no, that's, that's dope. What kind of, there's something, there's a warmth about you. There's something about you that I feel like you want to give back. I mean, my intern, she met you downstairs and like you gave her advice and, and poured into her like immediately. So does that come from your upbringing? 
I get. I guess. Sure, we mm -hmm. can. Uh, it's it's manners. Yeah. It's being kind, and I feel like uh, everyone is supposed to have that. But I notice a lot of people don't. Um, I don't know. I I guess it is. It's my aura. Mm -hmm. Um, that that's all I could go yeah. off of because I really don't know what it is and where it came from. Um. I like to, I don't want to say I like to respect people, but I do like to respect people. But, um, and I like to be respected as well. I, I don't know where it comes from. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't know if I can answer that. It's just, it's uh -huh. there. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. It's when, good that you feel a good aura around me. I, I do. <laughs> um, and now we have to actually go to a proper dinner, but later. No, we, for real. We, we, we like will, in we will real work life. That out. You, no, no, I'm going to tell you what I really want. I told Jason this. He's on the show uh -huh. too. That photo that you guys took in Paris that year, me, it was like him and Rachel. That was a bunch of no, it wasn't just you three. Oh, so me and Rachel, oh, the black party. Yes, so, yeah. So, would you like to know how that came about? Just for a yes, small, yes, and small, I want to be small. I want to know time. how that came about, and I want to go back and be in that. <laughs> But yes, tell I me. One, I don't think that could ever be duplicated ever again. Ever, 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 ever. Um, it was the right time, the right moment, the right everything. Um, Rachel Johnson, who is a stylist that everybody yes. knows, uh, is who I mentored under also. So she's taught Shout me out to Rachel so Johnson. much. And we both were in Paris with our clients. She was with Kim Newton and Victor Cruz. I was with just PJ Tucker. And her and I always used to, she always used to throw events with her clients. So if you look back, a lot of people don't, as much as y'all don't know my story, a lot of people won't know hers as well. So if you look back, one of the things she always did was just celebrate and keep going. So back, 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 Ralph Lauren was one of the ones that, you know, embraced fashion and sports. I mean, he did it, he does the uniforms for the Olympics, he does everything. And so there's a huge event she did with LeBron and Ralph Lauren. If you look back, Serena is there, everybody's there. Wow. Maybe at, it was at the mansion, I wanna say 2008, wow. seven, something like that. So we always threw events around what we did. So we're in Paris and go, do you wanna throw a party? You know, everybody's out here and we've been going to Paris for so long. You know, I've been going with her as my assistant when us wasn't in the front rows. Wow. We weren't allowed. They wouldn't allow our clients right. here and there or whatever. So, but everybody is out there with their, and it was a beautiful thing to see, to see every stylist out there with mm -hmm. their talent also and not talent that's, they're so far removed, but talent that's theirs. Right. And so we're like, let's just throw a party. So. We call um, this woman that was at Moet Hennessy like, can we get a couple of dollars to throw a party? So wow. now it's like, where are we going to throw the party? So we're like, oh, Lay Avenue. I was like, I know the owner. Let me call right. her. So I'm like, Alex, uh, can you shut down the restaurant so we could throw a party? He was like, you know what, Keisha, anything for y'all. We call him. He shuts down the restaurant. He was like, I'll just provide all the food for free. Y'all take care of the drinks. Wow. Moet Hennessy was like, don't worry. We'll pick up the tab for the drinks. Who are you going to have at that party? And we're like, we don't know who's going to come. <laughs> I call my sister. I'm like, yo, can you draw draw us up an invite? And it's like a random red and black invite. We plan all of this at 10 a.m. to tell everybody there's going to be a party tonight. We're going to quickly throw. And so we call all our friends that are silent. Nobody's on group chat. We're just seeing right. you available. You available. Right. Just come through, come through, come through everybody. And we called it the black party because it was embracing all of like the black style stylists and talent that was out there. Um, I remember Sway Lee opening the door, hanging from the door, like, damn, this is a dope ass spot, <laughs> a dope party. PJ is DJing, and oh for gosh. some reason, he has champagne. Cam Newton, he's doing speeches all around, and it was just an amazing, amazing wow. thing that everyone was like, how come we didn't get our invite? And we're like, I don't right, know. Right, it was just right. a thing. This was not planned. It was something we planned at 10 a.m., and it was just celebrating everybody who was there. It wasn't so much of building a collective and this, and we want to do this all the time. We're right here. We're all in this right. moment. We've never all been in the same space or the same room before. So, and it was amazing. That was 2019, June, 2019 fashion week. That yes. was so yep. dope. Talking about Rachel Johnson. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that that was, was that kind of your first styling job? Mm -hmm. Very first, Working April 6, 2006. Okay. Very first. I showed up to her you door. Wow. <laughs> she, I worked with the b -Lin group. So back, okay. so to come back to start a build of the story, um, I worked in retail pretty much all my life. I wanted to be a psychologist. That's what I wanted to go to school for. Mm -hmm. I realized how long I had to be in school and was not going right. to do it. 
Um, so I went to school for fashion merchandising and design. It just sounded like the right thing to do. And as interns, when you're in college, what is the first thing an intern do? You go to their list of internships and you pick, um, yep. I mean, today y'all are so, they are so different. So yes. very fortunate. Right. But at the time they were doing Calvin Klein and DKNY. That was the big thing. You might, if you want to be fun, you was going to House of Darion. Okay. And okay. this is like 05, 06. And for me, I was working part-time at H&M. Okay. And my, at their showroom, right? Not yet. I'm okay. still working okay. on the floor and in okay. the store. Okay. I'm working part-time at H&M and then our internships come up and everybody's going and I'm like, I don't like to make clothes. I don't. I right. don't care for it. Right. I don't want to make it. I need the clothes already made. Right. I want to put them on someone and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go to a record label because I feel like they style artists. Right. That's there, not knowing that there is actually people that styles artists. So I go and um, everybody knows him to this day because all of the moves he's made, making, Courtney Lowry, I don't know if mm, you've yeah. yeah. Mm. Courtney Lowry does my uh, internship interview back okay. in 05 okay. at Sony, Sony Records and hires me for two days and go, you're amazing, but you cannot work here. This isn't for you. Like, I'm not even wow. going to waste your time. And I wonder what, why did he say that? I was just very, I could, because of what I wanted. I didn't right. want to work in music. I could right. care less to work in music. Right, I right, wanted right. to find, to put this skirt right. on a Rihanna. Like, how can, right. how can I do that? It's not the right position. Okay. So he was like, I have a homegirl. We hire her and her company a lot. And they have stylists. It's called the B-Lin Group. And you should go there. Like, mm. I don't know what you're going to do. Fax your resume or something. I'll put in a good word for you, but that's where you should go. Okay. And I'm like, okay, sure. This might be 04, 05. So I go there. It's deep in New Jersey. It's like Clifton, New Jersey. I'm wow. still living in Queens at the time. Okay. And I make the trek. Two and a half hour commute every day, but I am there bright and early. 8 a.m. I worked from 8 to 4, maybe like three, four days a week. At the same time in tandem, I'm working in H&M's um, store. And, you know, I go to the store, I'm like, yeah, I'm working for this agency. This is like my job. <laughs> you know, all of these clients are mine yeah. and everything. And uh, everybody's there, oh my God, you're so cool. Right. This is great. But now it's like, okay, I actually have to kind of tell the truth. So I found out this guy, Tony Everett is his name. And he was the head person at H&M showroom. So I'm like, listen, I will take whatever dollar amount, I think minimum wage was like $8 or $6 or whatever it was that was like, I, I don't have to, I just want to work with you once or two days out the week. Like, I just want to be at H&M. He was like, okay, sure. Like we get, we're getting free help. Like you can come like whatever. Right, right. So I would work there and actually interact. So I worked with Brandy on the agent side, so understood money and how to build a business. And then I worked with Tony to understand what stylists actually do on the other side. Mm. So organizing and keeping straight and then knowing your money were two ways. I never fully worked with stylists till like 06. So working with Tony, I remember Eric Archwall coming into the wow. showroom, pulling for Mariah Carey. And he's like so fabulous and he's pulling and I'm like, man, I really want to do that. I don't want to work with an agent and I wow. don't want to be on this side. like. How can I get there? And Rachel was a stylist over at the B-Lin Group and she was leaving okay. and she's like, I mean, I'm looking for help. Do you want to come? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes, I want to uh, come. And so my first day with her, she was like, do you want to go to Cleveland tomorrow? And I'm like, she was, she had just started working with LeBron and I'm like, Cleveland? Like I've never, right. last time I've been on a plane was like, 15 years old wow. or something. So she's like, yeah, we're just gonna go to Cleveland and work on this shoot. So we worked on um, Jimmy Kimmel, LeBron, ESPN Magazine shoot. Uh, mm -hmm. He was hosting the ESPYs, I think the following year. So we worked on that. That was my very, very first like intern as a stylist job besides mm -hmm. me styling my friends or whatever. Right. That was my very, very, very first. If everybody wants to know what my very, very, very first is, that was my very wow. first on that date. So I always attribute that as to me touching clothes and steaming clothes and yeah. not necessarily putting it on talent, yeah. April 6, 2006. Wow. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Yep, so that is it. Yeah, so even just being around a LeBron talent and yeah. just being, oh my God, this is what, you know, and this is what I do, but speaking it into existence is what I wanted to do and how can I get there. And you were with Rachel for, was it eight years? Yeah, long very you long her? time, maybe 2011. I left and came back, left and came back. Um, when I left, it was three years. 
Then I worked with Groovy Lou. That's another oh, favorite of mine. Gosh. That's yes. why I worked in music so much, yes. especially with the talent I spoke about. And then I went back to Rachel, and but I went back as a stylist of my own for part of her own agency. So okay. she also, she served as my agent now because okay. I came with talent and stuff like that because of everything I did in music. So it went Rachel to Groovy and then back to Rachel as an agent. Okay, so you guys may not know who <laughs> Rachel Johnson and Groovy Lou is. But Two we're talking biggest, icons. Yeah, and biggest powerful force. Oh, my gosh. Yep, yeah. That's huge. Yeah, Rachel is the one who put Ja Rule in all that Burberry. If we're yes. going to give, like, accolades and LeBron and Megan LeBron, who he is in sports and fashion. And Groovy Lou, I mean, he was Biggie stylist, Puff stylist, uh, you name it, he did it. And I got to watch from like right there on along his side, I became more than an assistant. That's my brother now. Became more than an assistant with him. It was just really learning. So I got like the best and the greatest of both worlds, especially with sports and hip hop and just really understanding it and like from that lens That's early on. And nobody ever knows because I was so quiet and yeah. I just did my job. I saw Jadakiss two weeks ago. And he was like, man, you done made my whole night. Look at you. <laughs> You're just like what? sitting in awe to like, man, I knew you had it, but look at you now. And I was you like, I know, are... I know, I know, I know. I mean, I know. <laughs> so yeah, so it. it, it's, uh, it's different. Um, you know, came from very, very humbling beginnings and I always embrace that. I don't think, of course I've changed, but you know, I don't think I've changed fully of mm -hmm. like my personality and who I am and just to make sure everybody's always proud of me and what I'm doing. So you still are Man, I'm so proud of you. Look like it it makes sense. I can yeah. see it. I can see why you was that. Like, yeah. you, you came here. So that always makes me like, oh, I want to do it again. Like, yeah. how can I get that feeling from somebody again? What was that decision like when you said, now I'm gonna go and start my own thing? Yes, I have my own clients, but you have your own agency as well, right? Like have... your own business. My own business. You have your my own, own business. business. So so what was that? Behind. Okay, your own business. <laughs> What was that transition? Was that hard for you? Like, did you know for sure that it's time for me to go and like really establish my own thing? Like, did it take a while to make that decision? Then, yeah. Um, Cause this would have been 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. um, I was leaving um, the agency I was with and I wanted to work with somebody more personal and work alongside. And how was I to do that? Was I scared? Yes. Uh, d did I know what I was doing? No. Did I know what a, what my day rate really meant? No. I didn't know what I was worth. I didn't know any of that. Um, I had relationships, but not much relationships. Mm. You know, um, thank God I had the relationships then because that carried me a long way. But. I, I didn't know and I was clueless and I always, it's okay to be clueless, but it's also okay to ask questions. It's also okay okay to be vulnerable in those moments and reach out to other people, see where you can lend a hand. I, I don't, I think a lot of ego plays a part in mm -hmm. today. And so we get all of these interns and assistants, uh, you can attest to it, that don't wanna ask questions, don't wanna do it, don't wanna say anything and right. think everybody knows it all. You don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You don't know anything. You don't know what's going on. And it's okay to not understand certain things. It's great to have common sense, but it's okay to not yeah. understand certain things. So um, I started working with Hillary Weston, who is a was a big time manager from like Little Kim. And she was uh, Biggie's assistant and she was all of that. And she started like managing and taking control of my career early, early on. And it has shaped me, you know, black women, of course, has shaped me to where I needed to be and how I needed mm. to formulate it and learning from everybody. Every time people find out who I work for, they're like, oh, you just like, you You from everywhere. I was like, yeah, I know, but right. how come I've never seen you? I don't know, because I've always been here. I was, right. I didn't have blonde hair. Right, right, I, I was right, like, I've right, always right, been there. Right. I, I, I was like, I was there. Right, right. <laughs> you know, I was part of that moment and just become an adult. And um, I had saw this question one time. I was like, when did you realize you were a woman? And it's like a weird thing for people to mm. say, like when you felt like a woman and I didn't really feel like I owned my stuff until like I was like 33, I'm 38 now. Yeah. So I didn't feel like I owned a lot yeah. or owned who I was or can say who I am and what I want with such conviction. And now, 
not necessarily demanding, but I demand certain things and yeah. I know what I want. And I, and there's a lot of people who don't. There's yeah. not a lot of people that don't realize, but it was taking that leap, taking that jump and really understanding that on the other side, everybody, if I got it this far, the other side, everything is going to be okay. I just got to keep that same back mentality of just trusting every step. And I just kept going. I know it sounds like I always don't want to say it sounds like fluff because what in turn can no, take that story and like, oh my God, me trusting is well, not working. Well, they don't have to take that story. Yeah. They can buy your book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which they I can, should have brought for you. My they, bad. They can buy your book. <laughs> but Her book is available on Amazon. You don't have to give up all the gems because all the gems are in the book. But and ever, but, ever. but give the let's plug this book right now, Keisha. <laughs> I don't ever, ever want to sell fluff. Right. Uh, the Essential Guide to Styling and Understanding Your Business. KMC Me, that's me and my business is available. The Essential on, Guide to Styling and Knowing Your Business. And Knowing Your Business. It's it available is, on Amazon. Yes. Uh, iPhone, I, I, Apple Books, yep. uh, Kindle. And you can also get hard copies that is personally signed by me. And on this my is website. your camera right here. Oh, KMCME.com. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. They can do that, but I don't ever um, want to sell fluff. I was telling someone the other day because, you know, everybody wants to be inspired and it's all good and great. Yeah. And I don't want it to be, oh, this is my, com yeah. from where I started in 2006, I faxed in my resume. Wow. That's what I did. Uh, yeah. Someone, an uh, intern today, you're not faxing. You should DM, you should yeah. email, you should reach out. You should yeah. ask all the questions right then and there. Um, I had somebody reach out to me and they're like, hey, I want to know how it is to intern. And they go, I'll go email me. But then they go, what's your email? See, see. Off of there, see, my guy, I am very See, accessible. that is, that is, I have a challenge with that too. I, I automatically, go, what's your email? Automatically, I'm, like, I'm not responding back. My email is right on my Instagram. Right on the page. You could press email and it goes And it goes straight. right there. Yeah. So or, if you're asking me for my email. Uh, off of that, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm going to tell you right now, off of that, uh, no, um, you're not getting a call back. Not. Or when you do email me, it's how you address me and what you put in there. Why not ask all the questions there? Like, right. hey, I want to do this. I saw what you did. Be familiar with who I am. Right. Understand who I am. Right. Understand the clients. Understand my career trajectory. Right understand that this might be for you or understand that it might and it's just a step over in your journey. I'm okay with all of those yeah. also. But I think today nobody is. They are just trying things to look cool and in the wrong ways and for the wrong reason. So, you know. But yeah. yeah. So we talked earlier about your strategy. So you are a stylist to so many different athletes, celebrities, um, but I started seeing that the people you were dressing were getting brand deals. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking through this mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, Keisha, <laughs> <laughs> I see you, right? Because I mean, the brand deals that they got, I knew, I said, this has Keisha all over it. Like, it's usually the fashion you get brand kind deals. of like, <laughs> Talk through your strategy when you're styling, like when you're taking on an athlete and you're styling them, but you're looking at more than, you know, the story that they're telling right mm -hmm. now. You're also looking at how that connects for future opportunities. So, uh, as well, what, what does everybody call it now? The tunnel walk? The mm -hmm. tunnel, the tunnel walk. Yep. or whatever. Which, which by the way, is, like, <laughs> they might as well put the tunnel walk by Keisha McLeod. Oh, man. Uh -huh. One day I'm going to phase out of it and it could be somebody else. I promise you. Yes. But uh, the tunnel walk. So that is that is um, how that was built. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually an important strategy. I looked at that tunnel walk uh, maybe like, uh, what is that, 2015, 14, 2015, 16, and looked at the strategy behind it and the marketing behind it. I think I saw what made, what was the light bulb for it is two years after that when I saw uh, Tom Brown dress a few of his teammates in uh, Tom Brown. And for when I saw that, I'm like, oh, this makes sense as a designer. Like, see, the designer's dressing, but why can't we do one-off? Why can't we release exclusive pieces and this? And why can't everybody work in tandem? Why can't it all work together? So I started to pitch that to designers like, hey, uh, James Harden, I used as my guinea pig. Uh, hey, I have uh, James Harden. This is what he does. And he's great. And he uh, gets 60 points a night. Can you dress him for a game? Wow. It's going to be on TNT. And TNT, they talk about it. Can you do it? And people will say, no, no, 
no, it doesn't make sense. We only do actors and actresses. We only do, this is not a red carpet opportunity. This wow. is not enough for us. This is no, 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 no. But I kept trying and I was like, cause it's something there, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that makes sense. It's, it's TV. You pay for a TV spot, it's gonna be way more right. than just actually handing it handing it to him. And so I kept going and Versace was one of the ones that said yes. They yeah. were like, oh my God, I get it. Like I can, I can see the vision. I see where you're going, okay. Right. They were like, would he wear this? And I'm like, sure. Well, are you gonna make it? Per well, personalize it for him and everything. Wow. Valentino, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would he wear this to the, I was like, he's gonna make it to the playoffs. It's gonna right. be this. Would he wear this? Yep, mm -hmm. yep, could wow. be one of our looks. And so I started to apply that strategy to it. And from there, it could become that athlete becoming an ambassador for the line. It could become so many more things of how that person and the stylist itself take that lane and take it where you want. It's just asking. There are yeah. no rules. There, There's not nothing against me asking someone, can I do this? There's no, everyone thinks that, oh, I looked online and thought this was the right thing to ask. No, I just asked. And right. To me, it made sense. And to me, to look at the other side's ROI, like, this is what they can get out of yeah. it. And this is the most, you gotta see both Everybody sides to it. Every wins though. Every, yeah, you the gotta NBA look at it. The NBA wins. Yep. The because athlete. now the athlete wins. Yep. The brand wins. Like, yep. It's a win-win win talk. all around. Everybody talks about it. Yeah. I think uh, when James wore, it was a leather, was it leather? Maybe snakeskin short set by oh. uh, Versace and even Bar they asked Barack Obama like in a random interview about his short set and he commented on it. That was something Versace wow. can't pay for. That no. was just something that came organically yeah. and it hits. A lot of people didn't like it, but you will appreciate it to this day. Right. <laughs> um, but it's one but of those- But it got those, people talking. But it got people yeah, talking yeah. and it wasn't for, I wasn't doing things for shock value. I was do doing things that made sense. That's one of the things that um, I still don't do today. I don't do it for shock value. I do things that make sense to the talent I'm working with. Right. I do things that are shocking to them and letting them step outside their box, but not necessarily, I don't want to do a shock and wear something crazy or right. something that's or not organically them. Those things are always wrong to me. I like to, my talent, my clients, my friends to feel a way when I'm working with them to yeah. feel like they need me and not necessarily, oh, want me rather than needed. So right. it's like a difference of how I put it out there. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and then I realized recently this is a huge, huge, huge deal, okay? Huge deal. I don't know why it wasn't like everywhere, but you were named the creative director I of know. Sherwood. I know. Which is a hockey brand. Yeah, hockey, it's crazy. How did that come into play? <laughs> I did, I was working with Austin Matthews of the Toronto Maple Leafs. So him and uh, his agent and I were really, really good friends. And I did an interview for Sportsnet. And I often would tweet about them like, wait, one day hockey's gonna let me in. I'm gonna change what they got going wow. on and they're gonna let me in one day. And Austin Matthews was allowing me to do that with him. I did the interview and at the same time, the head of marketing over there, he saw my interview. He actually was part of the interview, but I never like, I don't ever read back my interviews. I don't like to see my words, <laughs> very weird. Um, and he was part of that interview as well. And was like, I, I see the vision too. Like can I fly down and meet with you? And I'm like, me, you want to fly down from where? He was like, I'm flying down from Calgary. Like I need to meet with you. So we sat at dinner in February and he's like, it's this and that. And I'm like this, okay, yep. I'm listening because this is first time, not the first time a company has approached me on something like this, but something that isn't my traditional sense. Right. And people right. just talking to you. And, and I'm this like, is a long standing brand. It's long standing, it's very how long standing. How, how long? Have 70, they been in we're business? doing a 75th anniversary exactly. next year. And so this is something they also never, they were like, how you approach your other sport outlets, I want you to approach hockey that way. And have we're they ever a small had a brand. Creative director? They've never had any wow. of this. And so they're like, how do, you know, how can we work together? And I'm like, I don't know, we can figure it out. Right, so right. they, I've never had a company flirt with me for so long. I love you, Sherwood, so much. Wow. They flirted with me for eight months before wow. I'm like, okay, let me, uh, I'll I was like, I'll finally talk to my agent. I spoke right, to Hillary right. and she's like, how serious do you want this? And what, how do you want to take it? And what do you want to do? And I was like, I'll change it all. Or like, you know, it's getting brands to work with them, getting other athletes to wear the jerseys, make it cool and all of those other things. And to be with a brand that 
sees something in me that I not necessarily I didn't see in myself, but to see what I've been putting out there and really trust me to do it is like the most amazing thing. And now they're trusting me and a few other people I've hired uh, to do uh, the 75th anniversary. So we're making it like a bigger thing and letting them know, uh, voicing my opinion and actually letting them hear me out. So doing my first NHL All-Star, doing my first NHL draft, doing my first NHL awards are all new because I'm like, bright eye bushy tail to a whole industry like what wow. is happening like what is this sport you know because it's a whole white man well sport. you let me a know if you ever want to do a collab I, I definitely will yes Keep all the posted. time yeah every because single we're time. working on some things with another major sports yeah league yeah and please so we are always open yeah uh, and always yes. and always have amazing designers yes. available for it. Yes. And so it's um, you know, we're even building something where we're we want all designers involved. Uh, I could talk to you about that. They're just showing. Yes. And we can send that over to you. But it's like giving other again, giving other yeah. designers a spotlight and letting them know that, you know, I didn't forget about you. Of course we could always yeah. go big designers, but sometimes it's good to give someone else that doesn't have a spotlight. Somebody gave me a chance yeah. and gave me a spotlight and yeah. let me keep going. And so I love to give everybody else chances. I love it, Keisha. <laughs> okay. What's next for you? Like <sighs> what is next? Did I announce it yet? I did. I guess I announced it. So uh, on Advertising Week, everybody knows Advertising Week. Yeah. Advertising Week took my book and turned it into an e-course slash masterclass. Oh so we announced uh, early November. Okay. Um, and you will be able to subscribe and basically have a whole list of modules and however they do whatever they do in the ending of like whatever certificate you get, yeah. but you can sign on and you could have me visually and see my beautiful face telling you my story wow. like full on. Um, so we did something like this and it was like a not two nine hour days of filming wow. of just talking out my book and wow. really breaking it down. And I watched them take my book and literally put it in. And I would have never imagined this in my wildest dreams of like 12 modules of exactly, all right, this chapter, how do you do this? Added wellness into it and all of these things. And wow. we announced that, was it last week or the week before? I don't remember my days. I think it was last week or the week before whenever advertising week was here. Yep. So I did a panel on creative entrepreneurship and we announced it there and they put my video on the big screen. It was like a whole thing. And it was that's like, oh my major. God, that's me. Oh my gosh. So, that's but those are the type of things that are next for I me. I love it. I love it so much. Keisha, thank you so course, much for being with us. How can people follow you? Uh, I mean, I don't like, okay. K-M-C-M-E 17 on everything, Instagram, Twitter, uh, threads. Uh, you could look at my website if you want to know what I'm doing and see a little bit past in history, kmcme.com. This was the best. I got what I needed. <laughs> thank you so You're much. Welcome, I, oh, I'm welcome. gonna gift you with this. This oh, is thank your you. fashion thank and color you. book. Finally. I'm gonna sign it before you leave, thank though. You. But thank that you. is yours. I never got and, one. I uh, well, now you have back. one. Now I'm so excited. Now, now yes, you have one. You. Is this volume one? Or you That's doing, volume one. We're gonna multiple? do. We're gonna do multiple volumes okay. of the book. So okay. um, we're starting to work on volume two next year. Okay. Nice. And I think we're going to do it by category. So like women's wear, then okay. men's wear, then accessories. Um, but I'm excited because there's not like a book that um, contains all of our history. At and, all. Like designers in fashion. Yep. The last book that was written was 1982 by a woman, wow. Lois Alexander Lane, who wrote Blacks in the History of Fashion. Wow. And so I'm really using this as a way like 100 years from now, people will be able to go back and see mm -hmm. who the black designers were. Yep, and document. There, yeah. there isn't a book that explain styling besides telling you that black and brown don't go. Yeah. That was it. Yes. No one telling a stylist like, hey, you know, do you know how to do a product re request letter? Are you yeah. building it from the ground up? What are you asking? Yeah. Should you ask this? Is it okay? What are you worth? What is this? Right. What is that? So it's, I gave all of those little keys and little understanding wow. in my book also. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank this you. Was thank so you. Good. Oh, thank you. Thank That's you. That's a <laughs> Excellent. Oh, Keisha, thank oh, you. Of course, of course. Thanks for having me. So